I'm Brock the Yahawa, Brock of the Yahawsha, Brock the Yahawa, Brock of the Yahawsha, Bahashian Rakakodash, double honors to the apostles, the elders, salutations to you, sincere brothers' teaching, and truth and sincerity. Lesson will be entitled Same Application for Hour of Temptation. Lord, will you are edified, my source, Etiman, and the word or term application goes to the origin of apply right and apply means what to join or combine use attach all right which is symbolic for the word of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai okay we must apply the scriptures now and most importantly during the time frame of the hour of temptation. All right. Now, our case example but first, let me bring out this precept. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 and verse 18. Let's start at 15. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. Why? Because they, referring to the elect, will apply the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. This is our application. Lord will, we are predestined. Okay? They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. And they that love him will keep his ways. Why? Because these individuals are applying the word of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Right? And remember, love is an action. Verse 16. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well, pleasing unto him. Going back into what? Not disobeying his word. Keeping his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well, pleasing unto him. And they that love him shall be filled with the law via the Holy Spirit. Right? Verse 17. They that fear the Lord will prepare their minds and humble their souls in his sight saying we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men for as his majesty is so is his mercy all right and we are coming into a time frame hence the hour of temptation and prior to that we will be faced with Jacob's trouble all right. Again, we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. See, the elect will fall into the hands of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. And the two thirds of our people and the non elect scattered throughout the four corners of the world world. They will fall into the hands of Esau. Point blank period. Case example of falling into the hands of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Let's go to first Chronicles chapter twenty one and verse eleven. All right. Now this account is going to going into when King David had numbered the nation of Israel, which he was going off. Okay, and 
a consequence had to be exercised on King David. Why? Because Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, is not a respecter of persons. Okay. And if you can receive this in the spirit, the reason why Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, put the spirit on King David to number Israel is because he wanted to punish Israel for going off. First Chronicles 21 and verse 8. And David said unto the Most High, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing regarding numbering Israel. Hence a census in today's time. But now I beseech you, do away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. Meaning, please forgive me. Verse 9. And the Lord Yahweh spoke unto Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, I offer you three things. Choose you one of them, that I may do it unto you. Verse 11. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus said the Lord Yahweh, Choose you either three years famine or three months to be destroyed before your foes, which are enemies. While that the sword of your enemies overtake you or else Three days the sword of the Lord Yahweh, even the pestilence in the land and the angel of the Lord Yahweh, destroying throughout all the coast of Israel. Now, therefore, advise yourself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. Okay. So, in a nutshell, well, let me read it in the NLT. Verse 12, you may choose three years of famine, one choice, three months of destruction by the sword of your enemies, the second choice, or three days of severe plague as the angel of the Lord Yahweh brings devastation, devastation throughout the land of Israel, the third choice. Decide what answer I should give the Lord Yahweh who sent me. Verse 13, and David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait, meaning a position of difficulty. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord Yahweh, for very great are his mercies, but let me not fall into the hand of man. All right. So what happened? Three days of severe plague fell upon Israel, okay? So the so it's like it. So the Lord Yahweh sent pestilence on Israel, and there fell of Israel seventy thousand men, and the Most High sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying the Lord Yahweh and slack him. Let me read that again. And the Most High sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord Yahweh beheld and he repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough. Stay now your hand. And the angel of the Lord Yahweh stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Now, do you see the mercy of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah? He made the angel stop. And David had this faith in Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah from the get go. That's why he chose, let me fall into the hand of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Because why? 
He is extremely merciful. Okay? And we must apply this same concept of faith now and throughout, especially during during Jacob's trouble, and most importantly, during the hour of temptation, okay? Which is Revelation 3 and 10. That's the precept. Because you have kept the word of my patience. And another way, or what, what um, this is evidenced by, is applying the word. And it starts with our faith in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Because you have kept the word of my patience, I also, meaning what? In return, okay, since you did this, I will do this, all right? And this is Yahweh Shai speaking. I also will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come on all the world to try them that dwell on the earth, all right? And Lord will, we come and we stay in that same spirit that King David had. All right? The Holy Spirit was on him. And the hour of temptation goes into what? Revelation 13 and 16, and he calls all literal, and all is broken down into what? Both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, hence all, to receive a karagma in their right hand or in their foreheads. All right, going back into Revelation 3 and 10, the hour of temptation. Right? And for those that fall into the hand of Esau, believing in his way, Isaiah 31, woe to the rebellious children, Israelites, said the Lord Yahweh, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Verse 2. Their walk to go down into Egypt. Walk, meaning what? How a person regulate their life, right? Their walk to go down into Egypt, and also for walk a mannerism of life and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Right. So two thirds of our people will trust in the shadow of Egypt. Right. And the shadow of Egypt ultimately is to bring upon what? That in W O. Okay. <clears throat> Revelation fourteen and nine. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, and the beast is broken down into NATO, EU, and you can add America. America. Worship, meaning what? Your participation, going into your belief system, trusting in the shadow of Egypt, falling into the hand of Esau and his image. The image is defined as the system and receive his mark, all right? Something that must be implanted inside of you in his forehead or in his hand, all right? So these are the areas that Esau plans to place this gadget into. Verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High. 
right? And when you go into that term, um, wrath, a definition for this is indignation, meaning righteous anger of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. In the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, meaning a long period of time. And they have no rest, it's like, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever received his mark. Or Salakia, and whosoever received the mark of his name, right? So these individuals will be destroyed by nuclear fire, okay? And if you fall into the hand of Esau, receiving Revelation 13 and 16, you will be destroyed. That is a sin worthy of death. Last precept. Luke 18 and verse 6. And the Lord said, referring to Yahweh Shai, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not the Most High avenge his own elect? which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man come, shall he find faith on earth. And this faith will lead to us, Lord will, falling into the hands of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, and not Esau. Point blank period. Shalom.